Today we're gonna extend on uh, on stress. So topic will be stress management or stress first aid kit. As as maybe, maybe we can go as far as that. So uh, would you mind expanding on about physiology and maybe even psychology of stress as well, and then going deep into what's happening throughout the day, uh, how body reacts to different stress. Uh, stressors and so on and so forth because it's quite a big topic and uh, let's be honest people often don't realize that uh, stress is anything all your life is stress <laughs> so learning to manage it is, is quite essential it's not just or oh, arguing with somebody it's reading something it's lifting something everything causes stress in your body so and we are trying to kind of unwrap it and uh, give some ideas how to manage it better yeah, yeah, well, and like we elucidated in the video uh, before, all stress is not bad. Too, too many people associate with stress is bad. Just like you said, everything is stress. Waking up and being alive is stressful, and it is a beneficial stress, right? That's what people, so stress management is really built in to our evolution. Uh, uh, not joking, like you are meant to be able to handle daily stress. The problem is, in the modern world, we have stresses that our biology has not evolved to cope with, okay? Um, and we'll kind of get on with, with what those are, but, but the main thing that I wanted to elucidate is the mechanisms that your body has built in that are supposed to manage your stress for you and how you can turn them on and things of that nature. And then, you know, if we get further, we'll discuss about specific abnormal or artificial stresses or modern day stresses okay? so first thing is your your main uh way to combat stress is through autophagy autophagy is cell regeneration uh and then apoptosis is when stress goes too far and your cell a particular cell gets damaged so much that it just needs to be done away with and that's apoptosis so cell suicide we don't want to induce a lot of cell suicide that's how you deplete stem cells depletion of stem cells can lead eventually to organ damage that's how you get organ damage is, is the depletion of the stem cells at that local organ because you're doing too much apoptosis and not enough autophagy okay so uh, the obvious question is how do we induce one over the other and that's basically through making sure that your body understands and has the right machinery turned on to repair. That machinery is light based. Okay. So UV light, your body is meant to capture UV light so that when light goes away, in other words, uh, at night, right? At night, when there is no light, your body actually redistributes the light that it captured during the day. And it does that through your mitochondria, through something called biophotons. Those biophotons are signaling other cells to do certain jobs like autophagy, like rebuilding and stuff like that. And, and the best way to kind of understand this is that we are encephalated mammals. So what does that mean? That means we have big brains, okay? Um, and that word is very specific. Our brain system is built on a blueprint of a whole entirely different species called cephalopods okay cephalopods are like squid or cuttlefish or things of that nature and everybody they're actually kind of shaped like our brain okay and everybody kind of has seen discovery channel or whatever and they they just they see that they change colors and they fluctuate and they, they do all kinds of stuff they're signaling with light okay that's what your brain is doing inside your skull it's signaling to the rest of your body and the rest of your body is signaling back to the brain and it's communicating with light. That's an essential thing to understand. Your body internally communicates with very low frequency UV light. How does it make that light? By capturing UV light from the day. That's that's literally how it's doing it. Think of it like oh, the, the, the little lights, right, that you put out for your porch and stuff that, ca that have solar, sun panels on it. And then when the sun goes down, they turn on. That's literally how your system is bent to function, okay? So knowing that uh, light turns on light inside your body, you can actually 
induce some of these things to happen. So I'm going to share a little slide and then we'll we'll talk a little bit about what that means and, and stuff like that. So let me see here. Um, here we go. To me, I think a lot of people will go straight away and think about autophagy, that's fasting, that's a lot of gross hormone release and whatever else you hear on the internet. Uh, well, that's it's technically true, but it's in the wrong direction. It's in the wrong direction. Autophagy gets turned on by these light processes. And when autophagy is going, that's when the growth hormone, that's when you're supposed to be fasting, aka you should be asleep, not eating, okay? Fasting does not turn on autophagy by just fasting. That's not how it works, right? People think that's how it works. That's not how it works. Even scientists have thought that's how it works and they're discovering that that's not in fact true. Um, sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't, but they haven't figured out this light thing. The light thing is what turns it on, right? The, so if you have captured enough light and you fast, autophagy will be turned on. But if you are lacking light and you fast, guess what? No autophagy, okay? You actually induce apoptosis. Again, that's the one we don't want as much of, right? So that's that's why I'm saying if you get the light right, things kind of happen correctly, whether you, your your stress management is being taken care of is what I'm talking, is basically what I'm trying to say. Um, yeah. Without having to think about it. There's a lot of uh, things out there that... Even what we talk about within a few weeks, it might be completely different. Someone finds out some something else, you know. But, but that's true. That's very true. Again, not not like oh, it, I, I'm not biased towards this is the only way. If I find that there's something better or something that contradicts what we're talking about, but so far this is what I found. And and here's the thing that you got to understand: you do not go looking for these in medical studies, especially if they're done in the U.S. because let's just say the money isn't conducive to finding out the truth in certain yeah practices. yeah we know that <laughs> yeah even so, when they uh, what did i read a couple of days ago that all when they were talking about that uh you can eat healthy by consuming processed foods and they're like they didn't even test it on humans they they just came out bluntly and just said this you can do that and now you have researchers coming out and saying no no it's not true well, why are you putting this out there when it's not truth? But they are putting the FDA is saying that this is, and you're like, whoa, calm down. It's it's, but everything is going towards a hey, just don't eat anything. You can eat this uh, vegan yeah, it's meat, and it's going to be exactly the same as steak. It, it's not. It's just not. Yeah, it's not. Um, and so I just wanted to show this slide so like people understand like and people you know might understand this already just from like if they've gone to an acupuncture said they've gone to a, a functional medical doctor they know that hey certain nerves at certain parts of the spine go to certain parts certain organs okay but this is crucial because these are nerves and blood flow and um ACTH so we talked a little bit about ACTH and POMC and things of that nature this is all influenced by light. So your brain has direct connections to all of these systems um, so that uh, your brain can literally induce autophagy here or at the limbs or at the lungs or at the liver, et cetera. And it's done through light. But this also means that for example, uh, a way to manage stress, like if you're feeling stressed in the body, a way to do this is through ac uh, an acupuncturist would be a great way to do that, especially if they know how to target certain nerves and stuff like that. Um, another way to do that that's very simple and doesn't require you to go anywhere would be like a, a red light therapy box shined at your whole spine, right? If you're not super precise, but let's say, let's say for example, you have a digestive problem, right? then you would be wanting to shine it in this area of your spine. And that would uh, induce uh, more information being delivered to that organ system, okay? Um, so if somebody stuck at home is infrared light, is, are there any kind of frequencies that are better than others? And yes. how long would yes. you say to use this? Um, so with red light, it's very, very hard to be like, oh, you overdosed on it. And the reason why I say that is because sunlight is going to provide 
10 to 15 times more light than you can either get from a from a red light therapy box. So time limit, there really isn't one, um, but there are specific re frequencies that are more beneficial, specifically uh, 660 nanometers. And that's, you're going to perceive that as actual red. Um, and then 850 or 850 to 880 nanometers is near infrared. You're not going to be able to see that with the naked eye, but that is information that will tell you if your red light therapy box is a good one or one that you shouldn't bother with. If they, they, if they don't list those nanometers, don't even bother with it. Go with a different brand that actually lists the nanometers and you want 660 and 850 to 880 infrared. Um, and those are going to be the most beneficial for uh, being able to, to uh, induce these types of effects. And you can basically use them at any time of the day. Um, except for, in this case, for stress management, you don't want to really use them deep into the night unless, unless you have to. And the reason why I say that is because, like I mentioned at the very beginning, the thing you want internal signaling. And the thing that tells your body to do internal signaling is the lack of light, mm. right? There's dark and light. So another hack um, deprivation tanks, right? Those are getting popular and people are getting a lot of benefits from them. The reason for that is because if a deprivation tank is done correctly, again, you have to vet your, your place that you're going to do this. Um, if a deprivation tank is done correctly, there should be zero light. There should be zero input to your senses, but zero light is the most important part to a deprivation tank. If they have ambient lighting, that's a bullshit facility. Go to a different facility. Um, excuse the language, but again, they're, they're not they're, they're not doing it correctly. Is what I'm getting at. Is it something you can install in your home as well? Yes, if you have the money. Yes, you uh, you know it's it's not going to cost you much more than like a spa, like a, a hot tub or something like that. But yes, this would be beneficial, especially if you live somewhere like uh, a metropolitan area, New York City, L.A., uh, London, things like that, because uh you're basically never in complete darkness in those places even if you have night shades and stuff like that the reason why i can say that with 100 percent certainty is because all of these places have a lot of proliferation of cell phone use of, of mm. communication yeah. use and that's a form of light that you can't see like people need to understand that all our wireless communications and again go back to the, our previous episodes that we've done on some of this stuff there's like three or four of them um where wireless communications are light that we can't see. So that also means our body can see them. Certain sensors in our body, melanopsin, uh, rhodopsin, um, cholesterol, for example, uh, is a non-visual photoreceptor, and that's all over your body. Those are picking up light frequencies like wireless communications. So even though you might turn down the shades and you think you're in the darkness, you're actually not, especially if you live in cities. Um, so when I talk about uh, complete darkness, I really, especially in a city like this, I mean something that encapsulates you and shields you from all frequencies of light. Um, so having like the best scenario would be exactly what you described. You have a deprivation tank, like a personalized one, um, costs you about $3,000 or so for, for a decent one that you can have in your own home and that you can turn off all of your own Wi-Fi in your house, right? You you can just unplug your Wi-Fi and stuff like that, get in the tank. They sell some tanks that are grounded and shielded. Those would be like the best. But yes, a complete deprivation and literally just getting in that right before bed for about 30 minutes um, would be enormous in inducing autophagy over apoptosis, especially if earlier in the day you've done some of these habits that we've talked about, about getting the correct light on your body, even if it's minimal, um, or even taking a red light therapy box and doing some red light therapy before inducing darkness, complete darkness. Because here are some of these effects, right? Um, I'm just- uh, this, this to me sounds like you described the childhood where you go, go to countryside and sleep in a shed. Yeah, well, and, and I was actually going to get <laughs> to that. There's a, actually a study that didn't that happened maybe like two months ago where they took students, college age students, and you know there, there's a lot of cell phone use, a lot of computer use, and stuff like that, and they had disrupted circadian rhythms, disrupted hormone panels. One week, one week, seven days, going camping. They couldn't use their cell phones. They they took them from them, but all they could use is firelight 
and uh, and they were in the, and they weren't even like in a tent they were in a cabin like like what you described you know a cabin but the cabin was uh no electricity and just had fire for light uh fire lamps um in one week their circadian rhythm was 100 percent matched to the sunrise and sunset and their melatonin production went through the roof their vasopressin production went through the roof and they literally measured their leptin and the leptin levels decreased dramatically in one week okay and th that leads us to the slide that i have over here yeah, and that's All something these... you, you keep uh, reminding that leptin is extremely important hormone in our yes. body that regulates pretty mm -hmm. much almost everything <laughs> yes it, it really really does and so um so right here oh actually let me right here so leptin vasopressin growth hormone release and melatonin are all extremely beneficial and look look where they're at they're in this side of the thing you need complete darkness in order for this whole cascade to get started okay and so and then right before this is why i say the most important times are morning time um for most people right now because look what happens right here insulin gets regulated in the morning okay what do we mean you normally deal with with most of our clients? They have a hard time losing weight. They have signs of insulin resistance. A1Cs are through the roof. It's because of this. It's because of this. Their morning routine is lacking the critical light component to tell the body what to do with insulin and how to manage it and, and cortisol and other things like that. Um, um, and then at the evening, which is the second part of the day that I, that I describe as very important, look at what happens here when you miss evening time or when you mess up the transition of dark or uh, light to dark. Testosterone gets affected, cortisol gets affected. Okay, what do we see with stress management? Cortisol is non responsive. We talked you know, extensively in the previous episode about that. This is one of those times where it's like, hey, red light um, before darkness is extremely beneficial for managing this cortisol response yeah so that's why that's why i started the conversation today with hey get a red light therapy box if you can't get outside in the evening and get some red light free from the sun get, get the most powerful one uh, another concept on that red light box you need the 660 and the 850 or 880 and you want the most micro watts per meter squared that you can buy that's the intensity of the light so if you if you're uh you know looking at the advertisements for a red light therapy box and it says oh it's the most powerful one but they list the micro they don't list the micro watts per meter squared don't even bother buying it if they do list the micro watts per meter squared it should be as close to 200 micro watts per meter squared as possible if it's only 100 it's kind of a bullshit light uh it's not it's not good enough um, you need something around uh, 150 microwatts per meter squared, all the way up to 200. If you can find one that's the, the one, the brand that I recommend is EMR Tech. Um, I'll send you, I'll send you a link. Um, to yeah, that in the description so people can easily find it. Yeah, yeah. Um, those are definitely the best. They have the most microwatts. You can even go full out and buy the medical version from them, which is a full body panel. Um, which is like $10,000, uh, but that's literally like the sun. I I'm not joking. That's probably the only light on the market that's like, this is actually a pretty damn good substitute for some, I'd say so somewhere in Canada, right? Where the winter comes early and it lasts a long dang time. That People that live in high latitudes will benefit from going kind of extreme if they can afford it when it comes to red light therapy uh, because they can signal this manually, this particular uh, event right here, they can signal that manually. Um, and that, when I say this, I mean the transition of evening light into darkness. So you can induce evening red light therapy right as the sun is going down and then some complete darkness at night. Another thing that contributes to complete darkness, which we've alluded to multiple times, is blocking blue light through the eyes. It is one way to start doing that very cheaply it's not you know obviously blocking everything but it, it starts it's a great start it starts to induce the release of melatonin so you kind of start to mitigate some of those effects and stuff like that and uh yeah 
do you have any any other questions so far? No, you, you already kind of covered something i wanted to ask you about like like people who live far up north we know uh uh they usually have a bit shorter life expectancy so to speak you know uh, yes. and this this could be that one thing that we we kind of talk about longevity sometimes now and then but let, let improving your life quality whilst you are here so. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah, and this is this is one of the key attributes is signaling correctly for autophagy is the thing that you want to do for longevity, because the longer you can stay in signaling correctly for autophagy, the less stem cells you'll deplete. So as you age, you have a bigger pool of stem cells to work from um, to, to essentially continually repair your body. If you deplete your stem cells early in life, well, you're setting yourself for an early death. That, that is this is that's literally what we're, what we're talking about here is yeah and it's same like going and training in a gym you need to cover your basics every single day instead of looking for next best thing look for what worked whilst you were growing up why you you know when you're kid you're just running around and ground yourself and you do all the right thing without knowing it right. and then somewhere yes. life catches up with you and you're like hey what yes. do i do now i'm glad that you brought up the grounding that's the next the next uh, low hanging fruit uh, that you can do for stress management. Okay. Um, uh, in fact, you posted a video, you posted a video yesterday of uh, residents, right? Uh, where the guy was hitting a tuning fork that was, uh, you know, 500 and yeah, something yeah. Hertz. Yeah. And then the, there was another tuning fork uh, uh, a long ways away, about a foot or more away from the fork and nothing would happen. But the tuning fork was on the table next to a, to a ball was uh 440 hertz and the guy got another tuning fork a second tuning fork stood about a foot away that was the same frequency as the one next to the ball and he could tap it and the one next to the ball would vibrate why that's called resonance so your brain specifically your alpha waves are tuned to something called the schumann resonance the schumann resonance um, is the resonance of the earth 7.83 hertz your alpha waves are 7.83 hertz that's not a coincidence so what i'm saying is anytime you can induce the 7.83 hertz you're going to be able to induce correct signaling in your brain for restoration okay now right away people are going to be like oh i'm going to go to the internet I'm going to find a frequency of 7.8 hertz and I'm going to plug them into your ears. That's a bad move. Why? Because you're putting something electrical that has a different frequency. And I can tell you the frequency that it has. If you live in the UK, it's 50 hertz. And if you live in the US, it's 60 hertz. Why can I say that? Because you're plugged into the electrical power grid and that's way more powerful. It's going to override the 7.8 hertz that you're trying to listen to. It's not about listening. It's about the frequency, the resonance frequency. Mm. So do not do it synthetically. It needs to be done without this interference of electrical equipment, which is easy to do. It's really easy to do. It's literally take your shoes off or, or, or just bare skin. That's all that's required. You can ground by taking your hand and touching a tree. Okay, you're you're literally grounded at that point because the tree is grounded to the ground and your skin is touching the thing. All it needs to be is bare skin touching something that's in the ground and you can start to resonate. Now, are there places on the planet where this is more easily done? Yes. Anywhere there's volcanic activity. So the reason why I bring that up is you mentioned something about the higher latitude that you live, uh, the, the less life expense, expectancy you have, except or in places like Iceland, where the whole island is a volcano, the whole island is volcanic rock. That means it has a high magnetic resonance to 7.8 hertz. So just living in a place like that predisposes you to being able to ground much easier pretty much all the time. So that's another way to restore autophagy and stress management, right? Yeah, so that's how you become four and pull 405 kilos. Well, it, it's probably not a coincidence that he can live high latitude and do the things that he can. It's because it's where he lives. I, I, I'm not joking. I'm not. He has a leg up, right? And then that's to his benefit, right? Like that's he he doesn't need to know that. He just needs to live there, and he he already lives there, right? Mm -hmm. But these are the things that I'm I'm trying to elucidate. There are things that naturally happen.
just longevity. If you know what you're looking for, now you can start to hack them. Hey, maybe I'm going to take a vacation to a volcanic island that's near the equator. So I'm getting strong UV and I'm getting strong mag magnetism. So now I'm capitalizing both ends of the stool, aka where is David right now? I'm in El Salvador. There's nine active volcanoes here in El Salvador. Mm -hmm. I'm 13 degrees latitude. I'm inducing more and more of everything that I'm talking about just by living here. And again, I'm, I'm just extended. I'm not living here permanently. I'm just extending a vacation here to get the most benefits from um, all of these things that I'm talking about. The reason why I'm doing that is basically because my myself and my family uh, got irradiated by living right next to a cell phone tower that got built to us less than 50 meters away from our home. Again, because I know these things, hmm. I'm being proactive in remediating these things. I'm, I'm literally doing stress management to the highest biological level that you can. And we also man space. mentioned many, many, many videos ago how you can measure that uh, if if your place to live is actually safe for yourself. Yes, and that, that was with the, the electromagnetic field uh, meter and the radio frequency meter. We talked about those things, right? Uh, your Wi-Fi, your cell phone towers, all of those are affecting that. Mm -hmm. and if you're looking for a new place to live or you want to verify that you're a new place, those, those are the, the, the pieces of equipment that you want to uh, either purchase yourself or hire somebody that um, there's something called building biologists that literally do this for a living. Mm -hmm. they, you can just pay somebody to come in and do an observational study of your of your uh, home or whatever. And they, that's what they're measuring. They're measuring electromagnetic fields in your home. These in your home. And they'll be able to tell you right away. Um, and they'll even troubleshoot it for you. They'll even tell you specifically, hey, there's a cell phone tower over here. Or, hey, you have some bad uh, wiring in your home. They'll be able to tell you all of that with their testing. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that, that's basically why I'm here is I'm inducing this without changing how I say, I'm not taking medications that try to help this. And I'm not taking things that are uh, like, I don't have to stand on my head and eat carnivore. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I don't have to do it. Just, I'm just not, living my normal. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I'm just living my normal life, eating my normal foods that I that I enjoy. Um, but the act that I'm living here, things that I don't miss are all the basics that we talked about. Mm. The sun is just coming up, just barely right now where I'm at. So here, when I get done with this, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go outside. I'm going to do some grounding. I'm going to get some morning daylight and then do my normal work. I'm going to repeat that in the evening. And the thing that I do here is uh, I shop around, right, because I know what I'm looking for. Um, the electromagnetic fields in here are cell phone tower radio frequencies are perfect. And at night, I turn off everything. And I had uh, some blinds that are installed that go all the way down and turn off everything. So it's completely dark and it's in the jungle, right? Literally, the, the, the jungle is all around me. So when it gets dark here, it's really freaking dark. You don't even get starlight. Okay. So I'm leveraging these things of light and dark to the maximum while I'm here. I'm also leveraging the magnetism of the place to the maximum while I'm here. And I'm and because it's near the equator, and am I have a UV index of nine, and that lasts all day long. Um, so I'm leveraging UV light as well um, to signal autophagy as much as possible while I'm here. And that is a remediation for the previous year and a half where I had to live next to a cell phone tower. Uh, again, th this, this means you can change things even, for example, you're a type 2 diabetic. If you did the thing that I'm doing, I promise you in like two months, you're not a type 2 diabetic. Uh, it, it's just that's... It's I, was really about, uh, I was about to say that this sounds like a blueprint for a perfect holiday. So if you are trying to get out on a holiday, maybe find a place that is nice, warm, but a little bit secluded instead of staying in the city break. Uh, and maybe do it once once a year if, if so maybe twice a year uh, just go somewhere where you can just disconnect yourself completely from everything to recharge yourself um, yeah absolutely like but people in the uk i think you guys do get like a whole month of a vaca uh, of holiday don't you something like that I, I know that the uk is a little bit different than the us um 
But yeah, I mean, if you can leverage it, you know, places like the Maldives, places like uh, Malta, places like El Salvador, places like uh, uh, not everywhere in the Caribbean. Again, you have to do a little bit of homework or or hire somebody like me, you know, do a consultation with me. And I can, I I track these types of things. There are softwares out there that tell you how much cell phone tower, you know, what, what uh, level of cell phone use over, for example, in El Salvador, there's zero 5G. They're, they're rolled back to 3G here. So even if there was a cell phone tower, it's incredibly less powerful than somewhere like the US. But that's not the same everywhere on the planet, right? Just because it's a third world country doesn't guarantee that there isn't strong cellular networks. I'll give you an example. Haiti, for example, is an island in the Caribbean. People would be like, oh, that's super remote. Uh, everybody's really poor there. But if you go and find the right software to look this stuff, they have the biggest 5G network on the planet. That's not a place you want to go, right? So you, you have to do a little bit of homework or, you know, do a consultation with people that know so that when you do plan a holiday like this, you are getting the benefit that you think you're going to get um, by, uh, you know, or, or, you know, figuring out how to test this yourself and stuff like that or hiring somebody to do it. But yeah, these are... These are implementations for stress management. Uh, so another thing, that, so we talked about grounding, right? We talked about grounding. That's going to be stress relieving as well. Uh, the other thing that will be stress relieving or, or helpful will be cold. Cold is another way to induce the correct stress management signals. Um, so uh, everybody, is, at least in the US, there's a trend of like uh, cold therapy plunges and stuff like that. Everybody's buying a cold plunge and getting in it. And the reason why it's becoming so popular is because of this effect of cold. Cold induces a stress management of managing your cortisol response correctly and making it so that you can leverage better signal. Um, going back to the beginning of this conversation to, uh, today, uh, let's go with... Um, so where in a day would you put the cold plunge in? And uh, how, babe, is there anything like... Can you overdo it? If, if it's if you live somewhere where there's four Meaning seasons, frequency, not not you know, not necessarily going hypothermic or with that. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. So there, there's the hypothermic part. Obviously, you can overdo it that way. Um, but if it's a season in the winter and you're getting short days, the answer is no. You cannot overdo it. If you're trying to do it in the summer, you can overdo it because cold is not a summer thing that your biology is trained for but in the winter if you live somewhere where it does get cold no there is no way to overdo it you could as long as you're not getting hypothermic there's no way to overdo it in fact when i was living to uh in the winter i was living next to the cell phone tower i think i might have mentioned it in one of the videos i literally had the windows open and it was 30 degrees fahrenheit in the room that i was in all day long and that's and so i was exploiting cold therapy without being in a cold plunge just yeah. by exposing myself to the environment um but if you do have a cold plunge, um, the way that I would use it is first thing in the morning, um, sometime in the first hour or two of waking up, and then in the evening, same thing, in the last hour or two before going to bed. Those are the best times to use cold therapy if you're going to use them. And then you can do it, you know, if it's winter time, you can do it multiple times throughout the day. But it doesn't take very long, only like three minutes if you're doing a cold plunge up to the neck. So it doesn't take very long if you have a cold plunge. And how about summer? So what can you what can you go wrong in, in the summer? I, in the summer, I would do it only in the mornings. I would do it only in the mornings, unless you have a psychological issue that you're dealing with, like insomnia, uh, schizophrenia, uh, bipolar disorder. Then you can do it both times of the day. But if you don't have any uh, psychological issues going on, then just do it in the morning because what it does is it makes it so that you can collect more UV light throughout the day. It literally prepares the body for the collection of more UV light. Uh, that's a seasonal thing, right? You're coming from winter. You've been cold all winter. The moment the sun gets nice and strong, you should be able to collect a lot of it. That's a built-in mechanism. And cold is the precursor for collecting lots of UV light. And the other thing is cold also shrinks the respiratory proteins in your mitochondria. That's the signaling process. Those are, the, those are the semiconductors for inducing this internal UV light that I spoke about, the biophotons. So when you get cold right before bed, you're going to make a more dramatic effect of the correct internal light signaling mechanisms. So it's very simple hacks. This is how it looks, okay? Ground, 
effectively at least once or twice a day, get morning and, and evening daylight. You can do these synthetically, except for the grounding. Grounding you can't do synthetically, but you can do these synthetically by replacing sun with a really strong UV light. Uh, you can you can induce cold by having you know a cold plunge, uh, and then when it's supposed to be dark, you can leverage this with a, uh, a deprivation tank. You know whether you own one or you go to do one, or or you make one yourself, right? You can just hack one if you have a tub and you use a, a tarp to to kind of signal uh, to like stop all of that. And then at night, make sure that electronic devices are turned off or at least away from you as far as possible. You can't turn them off. But if they're within your home, you should be able to turn them off. Um, those are optimal setting up of day-to-day -day life for correct stress management, letting your body do things naturally. Um, things that will kind of help with that uh, from a supplement standpoint, there is a little bit of like, you can introduce some ashwagandha, but these are not long-term situations. We talked about that earlier. These are preventative situations. You want to start doing these supplement mitigation strategies for stress acutely and before the stress happens. Most people don't really aren't in tune with their life enough to implement those correctly. That's why I'm focusing so hard on the things that you can do daily that hopefully make it so you don't have to use a supplement to manage your stress. These are ways to do that. Um, and then, um, yeah, that, that, that's kind of what I wanted to kind of elucidate. This is a way to set up your life that isn't super intrusive. And that unless you want to spend a lot of money on special equipment, you don't have to. Most of this can be done free. But if you do have the money and you do want to set up like a stress management room in your home, you can totally do that. You can totally do that if you want to spend the money, you know, get a nice high quality uh, red light therapy box, a deprivation tank, a cold plunge tank. If you have the money to do those three things, you're pretty much setting yourself up to have a big stress management protocol just built into your lifestyle. How about any nutritional strategies? Is there anything that can be done to help you to release correct hormones in correct time by eating let's say more carbs on this time more fats on this time or is it uh, yeah, or yeah, should yeah, you so, just so, follow whatever your body needs no you know, no so we elucidated this in our first series or in the first like 10 episodes of like hey you want to put your carbohydrates at the highest time of light during the day so work and bunch up your carbohydrates in the middle part of the day at the end part of the day, take carbohydrates away. That way you induce a similar effect to fasting, right? Because you're not going to have to uh, digest carbohydrates uh, in the morning or in the evening. Those are times where you don't want to do that very much. And then another thing is making sure that your omega-3 index is nice and high. The reason for that is because DHA is paramagnetic. Paramagnetic means it's electrically conductive. What is light? It's electrons. Right. So if you have a nice high DHA content in your diet, you can signal internal processes through biophotons more effectively. You're increasing the efficiency of your signaling of autophagy and apoptosis. So DHA is a critical uh, DHA is a critical component of the system. Um, so having that nice and high is good. And, you know, what I signaled, what I said about the structure of your eating is probably the best nutritional plan, plan for this. And other than that, don't eat when it's not sun. So when, when the sun is out, do your eating. When the sun is gone, you know, early morning and evening, don't do any eating. Those are not times to be eating. You're a diurnal creature. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh Thanks for that. We can probably unwrap way more on this topic, but I'm mindful of your time and we'll carry on in the next videos. Awesome. Thank you very much.